Okay, in this video I want to give you a bit of a feel for what it's like using the BlueJ GTS. The GTS builds on the previous X2 model. Anything the X2 can do, the GTS can also do. But one of the design goals that I had with the GTS was to be able to operate it without any companion phone at all, so that all of the configuration can be done on the device itself. You can still use it with a companion phone, for example with the Android Xtrip Plus app. But if you don't have access to this, for example if you're an iPhone user, then you can set up everything just using the screen of the watch itself. Okay, so first things, how to weight the screen. Just swipe upwards. Once the screen is illuminated, you can swipe down to display the menu page. Here on this first screen, you've got four different menu items. There's the user menu, settings menu, information menu, and the extra core menu. Okay, so let's go into the, let's bring up the page. Okay, let's go into settings menu. Now here we could do, for example, setting the time and date. So let's go into that menu option. Okay, here you can set the year, month and day and the time. So pressing the time button brings up a number keypad. Time's in 24 hour format, so we could change that by a minute. And you can see that's updated now. So one thing I should mention is that you can also use the side button to illuminate the display. Press it once to illuminate the display and press it twice to bring up the menu. You double tap it. So let's go into settings and then let's go into alarms. Here you've got four options, alarms on, alarms off, set the upper limit threshold and set the lower limit. Okay, let's go ahead and set the lower limit. It's currently set to 3.9, which is a measurement in mmols. If you're using milligrams per deciliter, then these units will probably be different. So I key in 4.0 and hit the tick when done. Okay, so let's Go back into settings. Let's have a look in the ruler or measurement section. So let's go into the Xtrip core settings and here you could change from milligrams per deciliter or mmol units of measurement. Let's change it to milligrams per deciliter. So now you can see the displays changed to reflect that. Okay, let's go back into settings. Let's go back into the ruler or measurement section. Okay, there's quite a lot in here. So let's have a look at the, this menu here. So here we can set uh, to wake with motion, uh, to not wake with motion, and we can set the wake velocity, that's how much force is used when you move your hand before it will decide to wake the screen. So we can cancel out of that long press. You can also set the screen timeout. Screen timeout's pretty important as far as battery life goes. The shorter the timeout, the better the battery life overall, just because the screen does use the most power. So we can turn that down and we can long press on the tick to activate that. So now if I wait a few seconds you'll see that the screen turns off. And there we go. You can uh, press once on the side to bring the display back on. You could of course swipe up. Okay let's go back into the ruler measurements settings and let's have a look at some of these other options. Okay these two at the bottom here control the haptic feedback. That's whether it vibrates when you touch. So you've got on and off. So these two at the top control whether swipe to wake is used. So if I press there, we turn swipe to wake off. Now what this means is once the display goes off, the only way to activate it will be with the side button. So let's just wait for that to go off. Now I need to press the side button to wake it. Swiping won't do anything. So this is another way you can save power perhaps, just by reducing the amount of time the screen is on. Let's turn that back on. Okay, let's go back into settings and have a look at what else we got here. So these are what's called the admin settings. Here we can display the QR code. Here this is factory reset on the right hand side here. That will erase all the settings on the device and bring it back to how it was out of the factory. Let's not do that. We call that the baby change icon, by the way. Let's go back into admin settings. Here we've got the QR code. 
This is used for pairing with a companion phone using the Xtrip Plus application. So if you're wanting to connect to a phone, you would scan this with Xtrip Plus and that would then pair it. See what else we've got here. So in this more section, you've got three different features. This one on the top right here controls which transmitter slot the Xtrip core uses. So on the left hand side here, you've got the standard watch or other device slot being used. The button on the right hand side would select to use the phone slot, the slot of the transmitter that's normally used with a phone. The only time that you would want to set that is if you were not using a phone at all and you wanted the watch to instead use the phone slot. OK, let's look at what else there is in the admin menu. So here we select settings, admin, more, and then here the leaf icon. So here you can turn Bluetooth that connects to the phone on or off. So let's turn it off. So now you can see it says phone link off. Now in this state, there's no way that the watch can talk to the phone at all. So you'd only want to switch that off if you were using it completely standalone and not using it with the Xtrip app. Now let's see what else there is more. The top left rainbow icon is just to test the screen. Here you can just see it displays the full range of colors. What else have we got? Our information menu. So here this shows the MAC address and the version and also gives some information about the transmitter age in days and the percentage of times that Core has successfully connected to the transmitter. OK, let's look at time related settings. So go into units of measure, select the time and date. Here you can see that you've got 24 hour clock using AM, PM, US date format or European date format. But also we need to set the time, especially if we're not connected to the phone. So, okay, no, it's not in there. You need to go settings and then top left time. Here you can set the year, month. So here's setting the month, you just key in the number. Here's setting the day, you just adjust the number as needed. Press the tick when done. That's how you set the time. OK, let's take a look at the user menu. So here you've got two options. One is for recording doses. The other is for recording carbohydrates. This is really only useful if you're using the phone app. So here you can enter the dose number. It's in units, so you could enter like just one unit. Now, we disabled the phone link here, but of course, if it was enabled, then it would send it to the phone. So here we can enter carbohydrates, 10 carbs. And what that would do is when it links to the phone next, it would send that information over and that would display on the Xtrip app. OK, let's look at starting a sensor. So Xtrip menu and then enter in the sensor code here. So G5, you just enter zero. For G6, you enter the sensor code, or if you want to use in no code mode, you just enter zero here as well. Let's quickly fly through some tricks and tips. So swiping up illuminates the display. Swiping down brings up the menu. Swipe up, you can go back to the home screen. Swipe down to bring up the menu. If you go into menus, you can swipe left to come out. Go back up a level. If you keep going back, you get to the home screen. So when operating the touchscreen buttons, kind of pecking motion works best. And it's also sensitive to whether it's on your wrist, so it works better when it's on the wrist. And if there's something particularly time critical that it needs to do in relation to the transmitter, it may take you back to the home screen just while it's doing that. OK, that's it for this video. If you want to know when more videos come out, just subscribe to my channel. To find out more or to purchase a Blue Jay, visit the website. The address is bluejay.website. Thanks for watching.